In this video, we present a slow flyer plane. The wings have been made with a plastic sheet taken from a document folder. The sheet is supported by wooden sticks. We use the sticks to provide a certain dihedral angle to the wings. The airfoil has been formed by bending the plastic using threads. The body of the plane leans on a 3 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. This rod has a linear density of 16.4 grams per meter. The body is formed by low density extruded polystyrene. The horizontal stabilizer consists of a 3 mm thick extruded polystyrene sheet, taken from a food tray. A sheet of 5 mm thick cardboard forms the vertical stabilizer. The weight of the structure without the plasticine is 65 grams. The weight of the glider with the plasticine, which leaves the center of gravity in the middle of the wing cord, is 92 grams. We prepare a first motorized version using a N60 brushed motor, a propeller of 4 inches in diameter, and an ESC for brushed motors. The set provides a maximum thrust of 70 grams with a two-cell battery of 350 milliamps per hour. This first version weighs 130 grams, has a thrust-to-weight ratio of 0.54, and has a wing loading of 2 kilograms per square meter. In the flight tests, we note that the plane flies fine with the center of gravity aft, in three quarters of the wing cord measured from the leading edge of the wing. This position of the center of gravity is not suitable for this type of airfoils. With the thread that holds the tail, we have tied up the rod in order to provide a greater decalage to the horizontal stabilizer. This let us to move the center of gravity forward. We have reduced the camber of the airfoil so that the drag force is less. In the original airfoil, the thickness was about 2 cm. We have reduced it to 1 cm, which corresponds to 10% of the wing cord. Typical glider airfoils usually have a thickness of 12% of the wing cord. We have reorganized the electronics to place the center of gravity at 45% of the wing cord. We have placed the center of gravity at the height of the motor thrust line. We have removed the fins of the horizontal stabilizer. We do not need the fins in terms of area, and we think that they create too much drag force. This second version already has the rudder installed, although we have not used it. Taking advantage of the fact that the rudder adds area to the vertical stabilizer, we have cut a part of the stabilizer in order to reduce weight. Another servo is also added to install a possible elevator. We carry out new tests and see that now the plane flies fine with the center of gravity in 45% of the wing cord, which is a more common position for this airfoil. In the latest version, we have lengthened the nose of the plane so that the mass of the motor has a greater moment arm. In this way, we set the center of gravity in the right position without using dead plasticine weights. In addition, this elongation leaves more free space behind the propeller, which increases the thrust by preventing interferences in the airflow. The center gap in the wings has been closed, using a strip of packing tape. The rudder is already installed, but not the elevator. The weight is 138 grams, setting the thrust to weight ratio at 0.51. The wing area is 0.07 square meters. The wing loading is 2.19 kilograms per square meter. Then, we note that the glider holds a minute in the air, falling down as the battery loses voltage. We have not done more tests with this plane. It is obvious that it needs a more capable motorization. It is recommended to use twin N60 symmetrical motors to provide more power. If you use a single brushless motor with more revolutions, the motor torque will create a left turning tendency, unbalancing the entire aerodynamics of the aircraft. You may use a single brushless motor, but mounting at most a 3 inch diameter propeller with 3 blades. This will prevent the left turning tendency. And this is all, thanks.